Gdańsk is a city on the Baltic coast of northern Poland. With a population of 470,907, Gdańsk is the capital and largest city of the Pomeranian Voivodeship and the most prominent city in the geographical region of Pomerania. It is Poland's principal seaport and the country's fourth largest metropolitan area. The city is at the southern edge of Gdańsk Bay, on the Baltic Sea, in a conurbation with the city of Gdynia, the resort town of Sopit, and suburban communities. These form a metropolitan area called the Tri-City, with a population of approximately 1.5 million. Gdańsk lies at the mouth of the Matlawa River, connected to the Linuka, a branch in the delta of the nearby Vistula River, which drains 60% of Poland and connects Gdańsk with the Polish capital, Warsaw. Together with the nearby port of Gdynia, Gdańsk is also an industrial center. The city's history is complex, with periods of Polish, Prussian and German rule, and periods of autonomy or self-rule as a free city-state. In the early modern age, Gdańsk was a royal city of Poland. It was considered the wealthiest and the largest city of Poland, before the 18th century rapid growth of Warsaw. In the late Middle Ages it was an important seaport and shipbuilding town and, in the 14th and 15th centuries, a member of the Hanseatic League. In the interwar period, Gdańsk lay in a disputed region between Poland and Germany, which became known as the Polish Corridor. The city's ambiguous political status was exploited by Germany, furthering tension between the two countries, which would ultimately culminate in the invasion of Poland and the first clash of the Second World War just outside the city, followed by the ethnic cleansing and executions of Polish-speaking minority population and ultimately flight and expulsion of the German-speaking majority of the city's population in 1945. In the 1980s, Gdańsk was the birthplace of the Solidarity Movement, which played a major role in bringing an end to communist rule in Poland and helped precipitate the collapse of the Eastern Bloc, the fall of the Berlin Wall and the dissolution of the Warsaw Pact. Gdańsk is home to the University of Gdańsk, Gdańsk University of Technology, the National Museum, the Gdańsk Shakespeare Theatre, the Museum of the Second World War, the Polish Baltic Philharmonic and the European Solidarity Centre. The city also hosts St. Dominic's Fair, which dates back to 1260, and is regarded as one of the biggest trade and cultural events in Europe. Gdańsk has also topped rankings for the quality of life, safety and living standards worldwide. Names. The city's name is thought to originate from the Gdania River, the original name of the Matlawa branch on which the city is situated. The name of a settlement was recorded after St. Adalbert's death in AD 997 as Herbs Gidanich and it was later written as K. Dans in 1148, G. Dans in 1188, Dansk in 1228, Gdańsk in 1236, Dans in 1263, Dansk in 1311, Danchik in 1399, Danzig in 1414, Gdańsk in 1656. In Polish the modern name of the city is pronounced, Dysk. In English the usual pronunciation is, Dansk, or, Dansk. The German name, Danzig, is pronounced, Danch. The city's Latin name may be given as either Gdania, Gedanum or Dantiskum. The variety of Latin names reflects the mixed influence of the city's Polish, German and Kashubian heritage. Other former spellings of the name include Danzig, Danzig and Dancic. Ceremonial names. On special occasions the city is also referred to as, the Royal Polish City of Gdańsk. In the Kashubian language the city is called Gdansk. Although some Kashubian may also use the name, our capital city Gdansk, or, the Kashubian capital city Gdansk, the cultural and historical connections between the city and the region of Kashubia are debatable and use of such names rises controversy among Kashubian. History. Early Poland. The first written record thought to refer to Gdańsk is the Vita of St. Adalbert. Written in 999, it describes how in 997 St. Adalbert of Prague baptized the inhabitants of Herbs Gdynich, which separated the great realm of the Duke, i.e. Bolesław the Brave of Poland, from the sea. No further written sources exist for the 10th and 11th centuries. Based on the date in Adalbert's Vita, the city celebrated its millennial anniversary in 1997. Archaeological evidence for the origins of the town was retrieved mostly after World War II had laid 90% of the city center in ruins, enabling excavations. The oldest 17 settlement levels were dated to between 980 and 1308. It is generally thought that Mieszko I of Poland erected a stronghold on the site in the 980s, thereby connecting the Polish state ruled by the Piast dynasty with the trade routes of the Baltic Sea. 
traces of buildings and housing from the 10th century have been found in archaeological excavations of the city. Pomeranian Poland. The site was ruled as a duchy of Poland by the Samborides. It consisted of a settlement at the modern Long Market, settlements of craftsmen along the Old Ditch, German merchant settlements around St. Nicholas's Church and the Old Piast stronghold. In 1186, a Cistercian monastery was set up in nearby Aliwa, which is now within the city limits. In 1215, the ducal stronghold became the center of a Pomerelian splinter duchy. At that time the area of the later city included various villages. From at least 1224 25 a German market settlement with merchants from Lübeck existed in the area of today's Long Market. In 1224 25 merchants from Lübeck were invited as hospits, but were soon forced to leave by Swantopolk II of the Samborides during a war between Swantopolk and the Teutonic Knights, during which Lübeck supported the latter. Migration of merchants to the town resumed in 1257. Significant German influence did not reappear until the 14th century, after the takeover of the city by the Teutonic Knights. At latest in 1263 Pomerelian Duke, Swantopolk II, granted city rights under Lübeck law to the emerging market settlement. It was an autonomy charter similar to that of Lübeck, which was also the primary origin of many settlers. In a document of 1271 the Pomerelian Duke Mestwin II addressed the Lübeck merchants settled in the city as his loyal citizens from Germany. In 1300, the town had an estimated population of 2000. While overall the town was far from an important trade center at that time, it had some relevance in the trade with Eastern Europe. Low on funds, the Samborides lent the settlement to Brandenburg, although they planned to take the city back and give it to Poland. Poland threatened to intervene, and the Brandenburgians left the town. Subsequently, the city was taken by Danish princes in 1301. The Teutonic Knights were hired by the Polish nobles to drive out the Danes. Teutonic Knights. In 1308, the town was taken by Brandenburg and the Teutonic Knights restored order. Subsequently, the Knights took over control of the town. Primary sources record a massacre carried out by the Teutonic Knights against the local population, of 10,000 people but the exact number killed is subject of dispute in modern scholarship. Some authors accept the number given in the original sources, while others consider 10,000 to have been a medieval exaggeration, although scholarly consensus is that a massacre of some magnitude did take place. The events were used by the Polish crown to condemn the Teutonic Knights in a subsequent papal lawsuit. The Knights colonized the area, replacing local Kashubian and Poles with German settlers. In 1308, they founded Osiak Hakelwerk near the town, initially as a Slavic fishing settlement. In 1340, the Teutonic Knights constructed a large fortress, which became the seat of the Knights Comtor. In 1346 they changed the town law of the city, which then consisted only of the Rechtsstaat, to calm law. In 1358, Danzig joined the Hanseatic League, and became an active member in 1361. It maintained relations with the trade centers Bruges, Novgorod, Lisboa and Sevilla. Around 1377, the old town was equipped with city rights as well. In 1380, the new town was founded as the third, independent settlement. After a series of Polish Teutonic Wars, in the Treaty of Kalish the order had to acknowledge that it would hold Pomerelia as a fief from the Polish crown. Although it left the legal basis of the order's possession of the province in some doubt, the city thrived as a result of increased exports of grain, timber, potash, tar, and other goods of forestry from Prussia and Poland via the Vistula River trading routes, although after its capture, the Teutonic Knights tried to actively reduce the economic significance of the town. While under the control of the Teutonic Order German migration increased, the Order's religious networks helped to develop Danzig's literary culture. A new war broke out in 1409, culminating in the Battle of Grunwald, and the city came under the control of the Kingdom of Poland. A year later, with the first piece of thorn, it returned to the Teutonic Order. Kingdom of Poland. In 1440, the city participated in the foundation of the Prussian Confederation which was an organization opposed to the rule of the Teutonic Knights. The organization in its complaint of 1453 mentioned repeated cases in which the Teutonic Knights imprisoned or murdered local patricians and mayors without a court verdict. Upon the request of the organization King Casimir IV of Poland reincorporated the territory to the Kingdom of Poland in 1454. This led to the Thirteen Years' War between Poland and the state of the Teutonic Order. Since 1454, 
the city was authorized by the king to mint Polish coins. The local mayor pledged allegiance to the king during the incorporation in March 1454 in Krakow, and the city again solemnly pledged allegiance to the king in June 1454 in Elblag, recognizing the prior Teutonic annexation and rule as unlawful. On 25 May 1457 the city gained its rights as an autonomous city. On 15 May 1457, Casimir IV of Poland granted the town the great privilege, after he had been invited by the town's council and had already stayed in town for five weeks. With the great privilege, the town was granted full autonomy and protection by the King of Poland. The privilege removed tariffs and taxes on trade within Poland, Lithuania and Ruthenia and conferred on the town independent jurisdiction, legislation and administration of her territory, as well as the right to mint its own coin. Furthermore, the privilege united Old Town, Osiak and Main Town, and legalized the demolition of New Town, which had sided with the Teutonic Knights. By 1457, New Town was demolished completely, no buildings remained. Gaining free and privileged access to Polish markets, the seaport prospered while simultaneously trading with the other Hanseatic cities. After the second piece of thorn between Poland and the Teutonic Order the warfare ended permanently. After the union of Lublin between Poland and Lithuania in 1569 the city continued to enjoy a large degree of internal autonomy. Being the largest and one of the most influential cities of Poland, it enjoyed voting rights during the royal election period in Poland. In 1569 a Mennonite church was founded here. In the 1575 election of a king to the Polish throne, Danzig supported Maximilian II in his struggle against Stephen Batory. It was the latter who eventually became monarch but the city, encouraged by the secret support of Denmark and Emperor Maximilian, shut its gates against Stephen. After the siege of Danzig, lasting six months, the city's army of 5,000 mercenaries was utterly defeated in a field battle on 16 December 1577. However, since Stephen's armies were unable to take the city by force, a compromise was reached. Stephen Batory confirmed the city's special status and her Danzig law privileges granted by earlier Polish kings. The city recognized him as ruler of Poland and paid the enormous sum of 200,000 guldens in gold as payoff. Around 1640, Johannes Hevelius established his astronomical observatory in the Old Town. Polish King John III Sobieski regularly visited Hevelius numerous times. Beside a majority of German speakers, whose elites sometimes distinguished their German dialect as Pomerelian, the city was home to a large number of Polish-speaking Poles, Jewish Poles, Latvian-speaking Kurseniki, Flemings and Dutch. In addition, a number of Scots took refuge or migrated to and received citizenship in the city. During the Protestant Reformation, most German-speaking inhabitants adopted Lutheranism. Due to the special status of the city and significance within the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, the city inhabitants largely became bi-cultural sharing both Polish and German culture and were strongly attached to the traditions of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The city suffered a last great plague and a slow economic decline due to the wars of the 18th century. As a stronghold of Stanislaw Leszczynski's supporters during the War of the Polish Succession, it was taken by the Russians after the Siege of Danzig in 1734. The Danzig Research Society founded in 1743 was one of the first of its kind. Prussia and Germany. Danzig was annexed by the Kingdom of Prussia in 1793, in the second partition of Poland. Both the Polish and the German-speaking population largely opposed the Prussian annexation and wished the city to remain part of Poland. The mayor of the city stepped down from his office due to the annexation, and also notable city councillor Jan Uphagen, historian and art collector, whose Baroque house is now a museum, resigned as a sign of protest against the annexation. An attempted student uprising against Prussia led by Gottfried Benjamin Bartholdi was crushed quickly by the authorities in 1797. During the Napoleonic era the city became a free city from 1807 to 1814. In 1815, after France's defeat in the Napoleonic Wars, it again became part of Prussia and became the capital of Regierungsbezirk Danzig within the province of West Prussia. The city's longest-serving president was Robert von Blumenthal, who held office from 1841, through the revolutions of 1848, until 1863. With the unification of Germany in 1871 under Prussian hegemony, the city became part of the German Empire and remained so until 1919, after Germany's defeat in World War I.
Interwar Years in World War II When Poland regained its independence after World War I with access to the sea as promised by the Allies on the basis of Woodrow Wilson's 14 points, the Poles hoped the city's harbor would also become part of Poland. However, in the end, since Germans formed a majority in the city, with Poles being a minority, the city was not placed under Polish sovereignty. Instead, in accordance with the terms of the Versailles Treaty, it became the free city of Danzig, an independent quasi-state under the auspices of the League of Nations with its external affairs largely under Polish control, without, however, any public vote to legitimize Germany's loss of the city. Poland's rights also included free use of the harbor, a Polish post office, a Polish garrison in Westerplatt district, and customs union with Poland. This arrangement was inspired by the history of the city, which for hundreds of years was part of Poland, with which it shared economic interests, thanks to which it flourished, and within which it enjoyed wide autonomy. This led to a considerable tension between the local German administration and the Republic of Poland. The free city had its own constitution, national anthem, parliament, and government. It issued its own stamps as well as its currency, the Danzig Gulden. With the growth of Nazism among Germans, anti-Polish sentiment increased and both Germanization and segregation policies intensified. In the 1930s the rights of local Poles were commonly violated and limited by the local administration. Polish children were refused admission to public Polish language schools. Premises were not allowed to be rented to Polish schools and preschools. Due to such policies, only eight Polish language public schools existed in the city, and Poles managed to organize seven more private Polish schools. In 1937, Poles who sent their children to private Polish schools were demanded to transfer children to German schools, under threat of police intervention, and attacks were carried out on Polish schools and Polish youth. German militias carried out numerous beatings of Polish activists, scouts and even mailmen, as punishment for distributing the Polish press. German students attacked and expelled Polish students from the Technical University. Dozens of Polish surnames were forcibly Germanized, while Polish symbols that reminded that for centuries Gdańsk was part of Poland were removed from the city's landmarks, such as the Artist Court and the Neptune's Fountain. From 1937, the employment of Poles by German companies was prohibited, and already employed Poles were fired, the use of Polish in public places was banned and Poles were not allowed to enter several restaurants, in particular those owned by Germans. In 1939, before the German invasion of Poland and outbreak of World War II, local Polish railwaymen were victims of beatings, and after the invasion, they were also imprisoned and murdered in Nazi concentration camps. In the early 1930s, the local Nazi party capitalized on pro-German sentiments and in 1933 garnered 50% of vote in the parliament. Thereafter, the Nazis under Gauleiter Albert Forster achieved dominance in the city government, which was still nominally overseen by the League of Nations High Commissioner. The German government officially demanded the return of Danzig to Germany along with an extraterritorial highway through the area of the Polish corridor for land-based access from the rest of Germany. Hitler used the issue of the status of the city as a pretext for attacking Poland and in May 1939, during a high-level meeting of German military officials explained to them, it is not Danzig that is at stake. For us it is a matter of expanding our Lebensraum in the east, adding that there will be no repeat of the Czech situation, and Germany will attack Poland at first opportunity, after isolating the country from its western allies. After the German proposals to solve the three main issues peacefully were refused, German-Polish relations rapidly deteriorated. Germany attacked Poland on 1 September after having signed a non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union in late August and after postponing the attack three times. The German attack began in Danzig, with a bombardment of Polish positions at Westerplatte by the German battleship Schleswig-Holstein, and the landing of German infantry on the peninsula. Outnumbered Polish defenders at Westerplatte resisted for seven days before running out of ammunition. Meanwhile, after a fierce day-long fight, defenders of the Polish post office were tried and executed then buried on the spot in the Danzig quarter of Zaspa in October 1939. In 1998 a German court overturned their conviction and sentence. The city was officially annexed by Nazi Germany and incorporated into the Reichsgau Danzig West Prussia. About 50% of members of the Jewish community of Danzig had left the city within a year after a pogrom in October 1937, 
After the Kristallnacht riots in November 1938 the community decided to organize its emigration and in March 1939 a first transport to Palestine started. By September 1939 barely 1,700 mostly elderly Jews remained. In early 1941, just 600 Jews were still living in Danzig, most of whom were later murdered in the Holocaust. Out of the 2,938 Jewish community in the city 1,227 were able to escape from the Nazis before the outbreak of war. Nazi secret police had been observing Polish minority communities in the city since 1936, compiling information, which in 1939 served to prepare lists of Poles to be captured in Operation Tannenberg. On the first day of the war, approximately 1,500 ethnic Poles were arrested, some because of their participation in social and economic life, others because they were activists and members of various Polish organizations. On the 2nd of September 1939, 150 of them were deported to the Sitcherheitsdienst camp Stutthof some 50 kilometers from Danzig, and murdered. Many Poles living in Danzig were deported to Stutthof or executed in the Piasnica forest. In 1941, Hitler ordered the invasion of the Soviet Union, eventually causing the fortunes of war to turn against Germany. As the Soviet army advanced in 1944, German populations in Central and Eastern Europe took flight, resulting in the beginning of a great population shift. After the final Soviet offensives began in January 1945, hundreds of thousands of German refugees converged on Danzig, many of whom had fled on foot from East Prussia, some tried to escape through the city's port in a large-scale evacuation involving hundreds of German cargo and passenger ships. Some of the ships were sunk by the Soviets, including the Wilhelm Gustloff after an evacuation was attempted at neighboring Gdynia. In the process, tens of thousands of refugees were killed. The city also endured heavy Allied and Soviet air raids. Those who survived and could not escape had to face the Soviet army, which captured the heavily damaged city on 30 March 1945 followed by large-scale rape and looting. In line with the decisions made by the Allies at the Yalta and Potsdam conferences, the city was integrated with Poland. The remaining German residents of the city who had survived the war fled or were expelled to post-war Germany. The city was repopulated by ethnic Poles. Up to 18% of them had been deported by the Soviets in two major waves from Polish areas annexed by the Soviet Union, such as the eastern portion of pre-war Poland. Contemporary times. Parts of the historic old city of Gdańsk, which had suffered large-scale destruction during the war, were rebuilt during the 1950s and 1960s. The reconstruction was not tied to the city's pre-war appearance, but instead was politically motivated as a means of culturally cleansing and destroying all traces of German influence from the city. Any traces of German tradition were ignored by the communists, suppressed, or regarded as Prussian barbarism, only worthy of demolition while communist and Flemish, Dutch, Italian and French influences were used to replace the historically accurate Germanic architecture which the city was built upon since the 14th century. Boosted by heavy investment in the development of its port and three major shipyards for Soviet ambitions in the Baltic region, Gdańsk became the major shipping and industrial center of the People's Republic of Poland. In December 1970, Gdańsk was the scene of anti-regime demonstrations, which led to the downfall of Poland's communist leader Władysław Gomułka. During the demonstrations in Gdańsk and Gdynia, military as well as the police opened fire on the demonstrators causing several dozen deaths. Ten years later, in August 1980, Gdańsk shipyard was the birthplace of the Solidarity Trade Union movement. In September 1981, to deter Solidarity, Soviet Union launched Exercise Zapod 81, the largest military exercise in history, during which amphibious landings were conducted near Gdańsk. Meanwhile, the Solidarity held its first National Congress in Hala Olivia, Gdańsk when more than 800 deputies participated. Its opposition to the communist regime led to the end of Communist Party rule in 1989, and sparked a series of protests that overthrew the communist regimes of the former Soviet bloc. Solidarity's leader, Lech Walesa, became president of Poland in 1990. In 2014 the European Solidarity Center, a museum and library devoted to the history of the movement, opened in Gdańsk. Gdańsk native Donald Tusk became Prime Minister of Poland in 2007, and President of the European Council in 2014. Today Gdańsk is a major shipping port and tourist destination. In January 2019, the mayor of Gdańsk, Paweł Adamowicz, 
was assassinated by a man who had just been released from prison for violent crimes. The man claimed after stabbing the mayor in the abdomen, near the heart that the mayor's political party had been responsible for imprisoning him. Though Adamovich was able to undergo a multi-hour surgery to try to treat his wounds, he died the next day. In October 2019, the city of Gdańsk was awarded the Princess of Asturias Award in the Concord category as a recognition of the fact that, the past and present in Gdańsk are sensitive to solidarity, the defense of freedom and human rights, as well as to the preservation of peace.